The skills of India's artisans have served the needs of many. They have spanned civilizations, nations, and millennia, adapting to changing materials, technologies, and needs. India's crafts are both timeless and contemporary, rural and urban, simple and ornate. They have traveled with the times, reaching the here and now. Art styles abound in every region, embellishing ceremonies, festivals, walls and wedding beds. A living heritage shapes the landscape of culture. A practicing artist displays the contemporariness of tradition. Travel along the Indian crafts journey, travel into the creative soul of India, guided by maps that document the ordinary and the extraordinary. Embrace crafts and textiles that add beauty to our lives and bring dignity and prosperity to the lives of their makers. Namaste. The Indian crafts journey is like a river going from its source to the ocean and a traveler who wants to go into the creative soul of India travels from his or her home to the world beyond. A world full of crafts, craftspeople, traditional and modern arts, textiles that have been woven on looms thousands of years ago and continue even today. The Indian craft's journey is like life's very source. Water that carries with it influences from the banks, influences sometimes good, sometimes bad, but forever moving and forever unchanging. The Dastakari Hat Samiti, which is a national association of craftspeople, decided that it must express its identity it must show the world the crafts of India in all its variety, with all its cultural influences, and to document it for posterity in an interesting way that young and old could perhaps keep a little bit of India folded in their pockets in the form of a map. The maps here of India with general India information on crafts as well as of the crafts and textiles of each and every state of India, gives you just a little taste, an aperitif to see what's beyond. These maps are made by contemporary artist, a woman who has chosen to take the very depth of tradition and the very pillars of all craft activity, the making of a pot and the making of cloth. For no human being can be without food and without clothing. The woman as the source of life, as the source of energy, collects that water without which we cannot live in mud pots, metal pots, all kinds of shapes and sizes and collects it to nourish humanity. Here on this side we have the weaver, generations behind him, weaving on golden looms, fabrics that reached all over the world centuries ago. Today, with mechanization, modernization, globalization, perhaps those very fine muslins are turning into water. But let water be a life source and not something that creates loss. Our crafts have been collected from all over the country with every small tradition, ancient, new, done by women, on the palms of their hands, on the floors of their kitchens, and maybe even on their bedposts. We have collected artifacts that just express a little bit of culture, the culture that builds upon everything that is India. Our mammoth craft documentation project actually started in 1993 
and we started with the capital of India, Delhi, because all the crafts of India can be found some way or the other in Delhi. The Delhi map itself is made in natural colors of bougainvillea, marigold and uh, henna as well as cow dung. All these natural colors are used in the Bihar style of painting from Mithila which is commonly known as Madhubani and these beautiful colors made out of flowers. According to the tradition of the Mithila artist, he never picks flowers from a neighbor's garden. He does not pick flowers that are on a tree but only those which have fallen and he does not pick any plant or flower that is edible. It's a beautiful way of preserving the environment, which I think a lot of city folk could actually learn about. All our maps have very simple crafts to show what comes out of that particular area or state. Little cloth toys are made in Delhi, and our man and woman here are lying on a bed of soft pink dal, lentil that people eat a lot of. And because the people of Delhi love to eat, we have yellow and pale pink dals as a backdrop. I'm sure people of Delhi would recognize the little joke in that. In the tiny by lanes of Delhi, which again you see on these maps, all kinds of old fashioned musical instruments are made. This tiny drum is called a nagara. The lovely carved hairpins that you see are actually looking like drumsticks over here, but they're something that you can adorn your hair with. We have a most beautiful market, specially dedicated to handicrafts, called Dilli Hat, that has been established in the capital city because craftspeople from all over India need a market where there is purchasing power. The Dilli Hat works on a wonderful principle where the whole lot of people who come there with their crafts change every fortnight. So every time you go there, you see something new. And every time you go there and you like something, you buy it because you may not find it again. It's a wonderful sales gimmick. And that's exactly what Dilli Hart tries to do, to draw people in to buy handicrafts. This is where the first map started. The first map was released publicly and we set off on our journey. Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh. These are three completely disparate geographical regions which have come together politically to form the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Each region brings out its own crafts, but here we've chosen to bring out Kashmir through its softer colors and its climate that is more akin to Europe. Soft shades are not really known in India, which is famous for its vibrant yellows and greens. But the soft blues that you see here are of lakes and mountains and colors that have been brought out by the papier-mâché artist. On the right side, we have the crafts, which are shown in the form of a typical hunting scene painting, which is common to papier-mâché art. You have all the beautiful animals and birds and typical of Islamic art, there is no depiction of a human being. The textile side of the map is fascinating because it is a painted reproduction of a Kashmiri shawl, which is embroidered and lying in the State Museum in Srinagar. You can see the shawl, which has Srinagar's different areas embroidered on it, including the Shankaracharya Hill. This is a Kangri. It is a hot water bottle for every Kashmiri in the cold winters. Inside, is made out of terracotta, so the village potter is kept busy. And the outside is covered with wicker, which is from the willow that grows along the waterside in Kashmir. This particular kangri is specially decorated 
because it is mandatory for every Kashmiri bride to carry one on her wedding day. So it has all these beautiful tassels and even little mirrors in which she can look at her face while she's getting ready for her wedding ceremony. Punjab is a land of many stories and five rivers. That gave us the opportunity to tell many stories in our map. The most important one is the, the craft side, which has Guru Nanak at the top. There's a wonderful story told by those who believe in him, that he, the great Guru of the Sikhs, visited a humble carpenter in his home. That humble carpenter is the craftsman and the theme of our work. The interesting story here is something that every religious Punjabi who goes to the Gurdwara, their worshipping place, will know. Suji is a kind of cereal which is mixed in a large handmade vessel like this in the Gurdwara and cooked into a sweet dish which is used as a holy offering to all those who come to worship. The dagger is sacred to all Sikhs and Sikh men and women have to have one on their person always. Any dagger like this which is handmade is used to stir the sweet dish that is cooked in the Gurdwara and only if it is stirred by a dagger does that sweet dish become sacred. That tiny little object in front was something that was picked up on the roadside. They are made by potters, a little earthenware piggy bank. Every little child buys one, saves a little bit of money, breaks the pot and goes shopping. The idea is that you must not open the pot and have to close it again. If you break it, you've got to go to the potter again to buy a new one and that keeps the potter in work. The beautiful Pulkari embroidery is not just for large pieces but also for small items like this fan. Every woman makes a different design and uses it in the afternoons to cool herself in summer. You could go to Punjab, follow the trails that we've pointed out and fan yourself with such a beautiful artifact. The crafts and textile map of Haryana depicts change because adjoining Delhi is a huge area which has become the hub of corporate activity after globalization. What the women of Haryana do is to create small handmade, hand molded pieces of terracotta which they then add together to make what they call the Sanji Mata. The Sanji Mata or Mother Goddess is created and worshipped during Navratra which is the harvest festival. Here you have the peacocks of Haryana, the potters of Haryana, right next to cars, and the artists themselves placed the tarmac roadway in the form of buttons. And that's what gave us the idea for our display. The potters of Haryana are very well known. They make beautiful tea kettles and mugs for coffee and tea. And also this particular potter, who has won a national award, creates miniature pots, which are so small you can hold them, five or six of them, on the palm of your hand. Rajasthan is a state to which everybody who visits India certainly makes a visit. But what they don't realize is that Jaipur, which hits you with all the colors and vibrancy of the crafts, is actually not just where the crafts are. The whole of Rajasthan from top to bottom with its lovely sand dunes, its pink marble, the darker pink sandstone and the ochre yellow jaisalmer stone fortresses and palaces all contain within them lovely craftswork done by 
craftspeople who have been appointed by courtly personages for centuries. Now look at our desert over here. We have the sand, the sand dunes, and just as we have a little family of camels, we have the shoes that a little family would wear, the child, the mother, and the father, as they go across the desert. Stone is famous in Rajasthan, and right from the ordinary gravel which goes to pave your driveways, there is excellent yellow jaisalmer stone which makes the dishes that you can eat on. And the polished stone is what makes jewellery. Painted wood which shows the old courtly traditions are of the people who used to guard the doors of the palaces and today you can make beautiful jigsaw puzzles out of that same woodwork. Our maps here fill up with information because Rajasthan is not only full of crafts but all these varieties of textiles. The style of art is the same miniature style that you see, but actually the miniatures are recognized by their different schools of painting. This is the Mewat style. The fabrics are hand block printed, embroidered. This particular thing is called khari work, which is a gold sort of print done onto natural fabric. The men still wear turbans in Rajasthan and the turbans are done in tie and dye. They wear them during their farm work as well as when they go for their weddings. All the bridegroom's family loves to dress up in red turbans and they're always in this tie and dye material which comes about by women tying little knots into the cloth and then when the whole thing is dyed, the places where the cloth has been tied doesn't take the color. But if you want many colors, you have to dye them many times. So it's quite an effort for this lovely decoration which goes on the heads of men. Women do wear this as well because they use them as dupattas, head veils, and they're special colors also for women. For instance, after they've given birth to a son, they will always wear an odini which covers their head, which is both yellow and red. These little bits of information are all given on this map. And there's also decorative elements which are part of typical Rajasthani embroidery. The Himachal map is a beautiful contrast of painting and embroidery. What we have tried to do in the production of these maps is to merge the colors so that they are harmonious with each other and with the environment and to integrate sometimes craft styles which are different in their medium. On the left is the main map of Himachal Pradesh. In the center of the map, the goddess Durga sits to convey the cult of Shakti which is prevalent in the region. And this mountainous area of India in the north is popularly known locally as Dev Bhumi or the abode of the gods. This is an area which has been rich in art forms known as the Pahadi school of painting, Pahadi meaning hills. It came out with the Chamba school of painting, the Basoli school which also spread into Jammu and Kashmir and the Kangra school. We have a printer who's doing block printing on cloth on the right and on the left side instead of a princess sitting in a courtly pavilion, it is a woman embroidering a Chamba rumal. The Chamba Rumal is a famous craft of Himachal. Chamba being the area and Rumal meaning kerchief. The crafts of the region are naturally mountainous crafts and we have put pebbles in our display to show the mountain rocks and how the simple porter who has to carry luggage up for trekkers or carrying provisions to mountain villages has to wear shoes that can grip the rocky surface. The shoes are made by the local straw and grass and are lovingly embroidered by women in all kinds of colors.
Himachal is surrounded by Jammu Kashmir, Punjab, Haryana and Uttaranchal. But on its eastern side, there's Tibet. Any map that has an Indian border with an international one is certified by us through the Survey General of India's office. They measure the scale and they certify that it has been approved and it is only after that that all these maps are printed. We certainly wouldn't want to create a diplomatic incident where someone would accuse us of taking a millimeter of land from somebody else or giving a precious part of our own territory just because we got our lines wrong. Uttar Pradesh is a vast state in North India bordered by many other states and containing such a vast variety of crafts both in textiles and in handmade products that they are almost difficult to count or document. And it's also probably difficult for you to believe that art can be created out of just scissors and paper. And this beautiful map that is here behind us is actually created out of plain white paper, a tiny pair of scissors, dexterous hands, and the colors have been put in by slipping different colored paper behind it. This is called Sanji art, and this is practiced in Mathura and Vrindavan in the areas known for the legacy and legends of Lord Krishna. In the rural areas, women work in a similar way, under mango trees, surrounded by monkeys, and there, along the streams, grows this beautiful grass, plain golden yellow in color, and probably something that you would not notice. A passerby may trample on it, but a woman will pick it up, dye it, and make these beautiful baskets that are lying here for herself, for her daughter, and for putting little wedding treasures and perhaps a gift to a neighbor of sweets made at home. We therefore wanted to contrast the whites and the pristine colors of Uttar Pradesh, the color of that marble of the Taj Mahal, with the brilliance that you see in the rural areas. And also to show that craft can be art and art can be craft. This is certainly not painting. It's perhaps not even a work of art, but we would like everyone to recognize it as an art form, one of the many, many, many that come out of India. Uttaranchal is one of the three states that had its birth in 2000. And that is when we embarked on the particular map which shows floor decoration as its art form. This is not unusual because many parts of India have floor decoration and they are done at festive occasions to invite the gods into people's homes. You will see little footprints which are placed from the outdoor steps all the way into a hall and perhaps going into the kitchen. This is a woman's way of inviting the goddess Lakshmi into her home. Art and craft is many layered in Gujarat. There is art on the map, there is the cloth which is shown through art, and then the embroidery is done with hand embellished textile. So it is three or four layers of art and craft that you see here on this elephant, which is partly tie and dye, partly mushroom, and done by women. Any woman is recognized by the embroidery that she makes. Each community has its own style and women are able to tell people without uttering a word whether they are unmarried, married or widowed 
just by the colors and designs of the clothes that they themselves embellish. Ratwa tribals who live in South Gujarat, who paint on their walls and invoke the gods through their five sacred horses when there is a child born in the family or somebody getting married. These artists, for the first time, put their hand to painting women who do embroidery and these kind of women who do beautiful embroidery on dolls. There's a lot of humor in their lives. They always make the woman doll taller than the man doll. So this is how the woman feels a little more important than the man. Everywhere in life there is humor and I think color and humor and vibrancy is what expresses Gujarat the best. Goa is a small state on the western coast of India on the Arabian Sea. It is a mix of all kinds of cultures. It was under Portuguese rule. So the architecture is always very fascinating. Tiny village huts with tiled roofs, as well as typical Portuguese balconies, lovely windows made of shell chips, and also areas where high caste Hindu citizens carry out their old traditional trades. We have modeled the one side of the map with the tiles showing a temple, a church, and various types of windows and balconies. And created, in fact, through photography and digital technology, a counterpart to what is done by hand on the main side of the map. There isn't much textile in Goa, but women do beautiful crochet. So you find lovely little lace doilies that you can put on the cups. The Wadli tribals who live in Thane district in Maharashtra are among the oldest communities to inhabit India. They have this ancient style of painting which is just the creation of stick men with little triangular bodies. But they give a sense of movement and vibrancy and an immediacy that is nowhere near thousands and thousands of years ago, but really are of today when we talk of modern art and graphic interpretations. And on the textile side of our map, we have cotton plants depicted in the many ways that the Wadleys like to paint them. We've highlighted the process of cotton weaving from its growth to its collection from the plant, the fluffy cotton balls that men and women collect and put into their bamboo baskets. It is spun on spinning wheels that are locally called jarkhas. And after that, it is woven across a loom which stretches from one end to the other, spanning the whole state in our artwork. The crafts map of Maharashtra, which starts at the bottom, with people going in different forms of transport to the marketplace. Indian buses, especially in rural areas, love to paint themselves up with all kinds of images. And since the Wadleys live with nature, we put a tribal tiger on the side of the bus. These three colors are intrinsic and organic to Wadli art. The red is of the deep red terracotta mud found in that area. The dull green is actually dried henna powder, and black comes from lamp black or coal. The white is lime paste or rice paste, and just these simple colors are always used in Wadli paintings. If you go to Maharashtra, it's not just Bombay and the gleaming metropolis that you see, but rural areas where work goes on as it did millennia ago. Madhya Pradesh literally means the middle of India. It's the heart of India in many ways. Madhya Pradesh is also the home of our ancient communities, the Adivasis. The 
Adivasi culture is always vibrant and is always specially imbued with their own vision of life, which is quite different from the other formal communities. The trees are their gods, the water is their god, and the animals are something that they protect and live along with. In many Indian art forms, the snake is given reverence in their paintings. Once a German customer who was looking at these paintings asked why Indians painted snakes so beautifully. And they were told by this simple artist woman that it was because there were so many snakes in the village that they needed to propitiate them so they wouldn't bite them. The German woman was astounded with this wonderfully non-violent way of dealing with snakes. In India, because of Western influences and globalization, children play with Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse and such figures which are not part of their culture at all. So we thought that we would use these beautifully shaped, interesting animals and make soft toys out of them. They are hand painted by the same artists and you have your snake, your lion, your mongoose, your turtle and even a cushion, a little frog that sits on a rock, the lizard sunning himself and the fish jumping from a hot side of the pond to the cooler waters below. In Chhattisgarh, they don't have a painting style, but there is a wonderful form of art done on clay for walls and for big containers in which people put their grain. Sundari Bai is this artist of whom there is a self-portrait in one corner. I specially asked her to make a portrait of herself. She was shy for a few days, but then she agreed to put herself into the picture. In India, most artworks are anonymous, and it is considered that whatever we do in form of painting or craft is actually a spiritual service to the master, and therefore you don't need to put your name on it. It is a collective seeking of blessing from the gods for everybody in the community who practices the same art. On this side of the map, she has a beautiful religious rendering of how Lord Krishna used to stand on the trees, taking away the clothes of the gopis around him. Lord Krishna, if you notice over here, has a wristwatch. So just as crafts and stories and religious myths and legends, maybe facts and reality, they all travel with time. And if Lord Krishna in those days was a cowherd, today he can be a cowherd with a wristwatch. This Adivasi woman is wearing all the typical jewelry that is worn by this ancient tribe and she is practicing a piece of work that every woman has to do in her home, cleaning the rice. In this particular exhibit, we have tried to tell a whole lot of little stories. The cockroach that messes up your kitchen but also needs to be fed, the bird who comes for a few grains of rice, and on this side, the terracotta articles which are sold at village fairs needs two tires and a spare tire also. Orissa is a state with so many handicrafts that when we sent our researchers out to gather information from every nook and cranny, they came back with more than 10 pages of type script that had to be edited out. But even then, this is one of the most dense scripts that we have on our map and you'd have to look very closely to find all the beautiful cultural expressions and the meaning behind why people wore the certain colors that they did. Why, for instance, in a certain community, on a particular day of the year, all the tribals wore saris which were woven in yellow. Their chief priestess would wear blue. These are the kinds of little nuggets of information that make up identities and cultures and the recognition of them. In a state with low literacy levels, it's important when a woman learns to read and write, 
how this can be expressed through handicrafts. For instance, in our metal work over here, we have women lying on their beds and reading under the light of a lantern. Perhaps not many women do read, but it's fun to see them relaxing and reading, and it's a wonderful social message for women's literacy. Stonework is very popular in Orissa, and along with literacy, we have a stone carver who has created a beautiful fountain pen that actually opens. It has a top and a bottom, and even the nib comes out separately. Usually, they use stone plates to eat, and there is also filigree cutlery in silver, so you can have something for the very fancy upmarket tables as well as the ordinary village home where people eat on the floor. The textile side of the map is a great pride for us because every single pattern here has a meaning. The borders have been taken from actually existing saris. These patterns are also from saris and each of them has a particular auspicious meaning like the conch shell which is blown in a temple during prayer time. The waves here are created from patterns of ikat weaves which is when the yarn is dyed before the thread is woven. So the pattern has to be pre-planned and then dipped in color and put on the loom before these wonderful designs come out. The process of weaving is also shown over here from the woman who always spins to the man who's laying out the yarn to the dyeing before weaving. Here is the weaving and finally the all-important market where the trader sits as women come to buy the beautiful saris. A state like Bihar is very rich in handicrafts, but it's fundamentally based on an agricultural society, and therefore the land, the organic soil, which is very rich and fertile, and the cattle that is reared, the fodder that is required for them, this is what makes up Bihar. And within these simple grasses and forms, people etch out and color their lives. The Mithila painting, which is called Madhubani popularly, is done as a caste-based activity to decorate their homes at festivals and ceremonies and ritual occasions. When the walls are painted, of course, there is a white background, but here we decided to actually rub the soil of Bihar onto the white background and give it that beautiful earthly quality which contrasts the fluorescent colors of the women. We have carefully planned these maps to integrate what is real with what has been painted, but what has been painted is something that has never been done before. In the textile map which is right behind me here, Madhubani art is shown at its very finest. Every line is repeated many times over to create textures and feelings that add to the painting. We also don't just live in the past, we create new things out of the skills of the past. And here there are a series of toys with the favorite transport of children and as usual for the common man, which is the auto rickshaw. In the auto rickshaw there is a lady sitting there painted in the typical Madhubani style. There is a bus with many people in it, all of them directing the driver, so there's a bit of humor. All these maps have been done as original artworks that are complete in themselves. We have not used the computer technology to put images all over the place. The artist has thought out everything carefully, worked under our guidance, and signed the painting as a whole piece of art. The only time we use technology is to bring the text onto the photograph of the painting and then print it for use.
Can you think that grass can make jewelry? Don't have to only wear gold jewelry. You can wear glass jewelry also. Glass jewelry. Grass. The grass has made this box, it's made this elephant, it can make this tree and it's made those bangles and it's made those necklaces also. Isn't that nice? You can have nice hand painted wooden toys made in Bihar. You like it? The women of Jharkhand's farming communities maintain a vibrant tradition of mural painting, practiced as a ritual art form. Elements of this art related to the Mesolithic rock art of the region, and motifs reproduced on this map represent two forms from Hazari Bagh in North Jharkhand, Hovar and Sorai. Hovar is the art of the marriage season when the walls of houses and particularly of the bridal chamber are painted anew. It's a very interesting technique where a layer of wet cream colored earth is painted over an undercoat of black earth and the designs are cut with bits of combs or the fingers exposing black patterns on white. The shapes of the animals almost remind you of Jurassic Park and this is what gives the backdrop to the map of Jharkhand which tells you where you get the ingredients to make ink. Iron and steelware, stoneware, and also the location of crafts markets all over the state. Jharkhand is famous for its coal mining. So to highlight the black forms on the maps, we used coal as the base material. And against it, the metal, which is brass, the baskets, which are again simple grass, golden against black, and simple tribal jewelry against black all highlight simplicity and excellence at the same time. Chitrakars in the state of West Bengal are itinerant painters and bards. They paint scrolls, compose songs that tell a story and sing them while unraveling the visual depiction. They travel from village to village, singing their stories at local gatherings and fairs, and bring to simple rural folk who don't even have television, events that have taken place all over the world. They can sing about the tsunami, a great earthquake, or even how to go about combating AIDS. Wonderful social messages and religious stories are spread this way, Textiles in Bengal are prolific. There is one market in Calcutta which sells 2,000 types of textiles in one huge area every Tuesday from early morning till noon. This is the kind of information we provide on the maps. Our little elephants over here are piggy banks. And there they are collecting all the coins that have been scattered their way. Sikkim is a state in the northeast, a tiny little kingdom that used to be. It is uh, heavily influenced by Tibetan culture and that's why we have the art form selected here of a Thangka painting. All the monasteries teach young monks to paint in the Thangka style and it's part of their religious discipline to be able to become good painters. On one side of the map you see the different kinds of uh, puppet shows and different cultural practices that happen in Sikkim. And the right side, which combines both craft and textiles, gives you information about metalwork, cane and bamboo craft, the masks in considerable detail, jewelry, wood craft, handmade paper, and mural painting. If you read through all the friendly text in our map of Sikkim, you will find that even this tiny little state has as many crafts and can provide as much information and pathways to all the things that you can get there as well as in any other state of India. The 
the map of the Northeast was quite a challenge for us. Here were seven states, known as the Seven Sisters, all very similar in their bamboo and in their weaving, but not having a specific art form for each state. So what did we do? We crossed the borders. In fact, somebody already crossed the border for us. A Burmese refugee living in India, a wonderful artist who came from the same culture as those people who live in Mizoram, Banipur, Nagaland, Meghalaya, and knew the lives of the people, combined for us the bamboo weaves of all the states and the wonderful handloom weaves of all the states. And so we formed a collage. All this has no computer technology in it. We have not lifted anything and put it through a machine, but hand work done by hand has been beautifully replicated by an artist's brush. Every tribal community has its own recognizable signature weave. They put a certain kind of weave on a shawl when they want to honor the head of the village who has come back after as a conquering hero from somewhere. If there is a marriage, the shawl will be different. And all these shawls are identified by these patterns. The artist has replicated each of these patterns almost as if it has been woven by cloth. This is of coconut, which comes from outside, but beautifully fashioned by the women of Manipur. Here is the people leaf made into a flower. This is a flower made out of simple cane. And the pine trees that grow in the higher reaches produce pine cones, which make these lovely flowers. So our display is full of dried flowers, which show the scents of the Northeast. Karnataka art is more well known because of its Mysore art form. We went searching in the little villages and by lanes to see what was the traditional art practiced by the people. And we came up with this beautiful, charming, naive art form called Hase Chittara. This is done by tribals in the Shimoga area. Deva, 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 nalla wo. This art is practiced on deep red terracotta covered walls and the soil there is also deep red. So that's why we've got a backdrop in deep red. The Hase Chitara women paint the walls all along the village when there is a wedding in the family to celebrate. Children's toys are made in Chennapatna. They are very simple and they carry on entertaining children with bands, birds and even toys like skipping ropes. Bidri work is a fine craft done on gunmetal. These gunmetal boxes are decorated with fine silver wire to create small containers. Andhra Pradesh does everything big. This large wall piece, which is made for temples, is 20 meters by 9 meters and was done by seven people, taking 18 months to complete. They actually painted, dyed, washed, and hung up the piece as one large composition. The story traces Lord Rama's lineage. So it's not just the story of the Ramayana, but 
goes back to his ancestors and therefore captures more than an epic which is close to every Indian's heart. Kalam meaning pen and kari meaning work means that all these figures are drawn with a pen that is made with bamboo and string. The colors are made out of natural dyes and there is a complicated process by which the colors emerge according to the artist's satisfaction. Here in our map for the first time the artisan is honored and the writing underneath it talks about his life and his work. The ordinary basket maker, the leather worker, leather puppets and puppet shows in villages are very popular in Andhra. All these are captured on our Kalamkari piece. The textile side shows the tree of life. The tree of life again reminds one of man's relationship with nature and how every aspect of nature has to harmonize with the other so that each can be sustained and all can sustain together. Textiles are another very rich tradition in Andhra Pradesh. It's not just Kalamkari, but Ikat weaving. Ikat weaving, as shown here with the weaver at his loom, is done by creating patterns before the yarn is woven. You have to make a pre-planned design tie those areas with specific colors in knots and as you weave the pattern emerges before you. These products are called telia rumals, telia meaning oil. In the old days the yarn to be stiffened was coated with oil. These are export products from centuries ago and show a grandfather's clock, a lion, flora and fauna and an ancient Sanskrit symbol. Our entire display expresses our concern for the environment by merging soft muted colors both in crafts and in textiles so that we show that we care for our future generations and that all colors are part of what nature offers us. there can be reincarnation in art. Kerala's art form proves it can because ancient prehistoric cave paintings of Vayanad hundreds of years later were revived as murals for temples and palaces. This beautiful form of art which is done layered so in the outside you have the first color and inside you have the darkest color. These paintings are now taught to young students in Guruvayur and Aranmula so that they too can reincarnate on behalf of the gods and the artists of yore. The textile tradition in Kerala has two forms, extremely fine handlooms in creamy cottons as well as straw, grass, screw pine leaf and palm leaf, coconut leaves, all used to make table mats, baskets and mats to sleep on. This painting today decorates walls of beautiful restaurants and fabulous hotels and can be used for the corporate sector if they want to bring in eco-friendly surroundings through aesthetic forms. Eco-friendly is a key word in Kerala as in many other places for Indian crafts. The coconut husk, the coconut shell, all these are used for some kind of activity which is a part of everyday life. The ladles are used for food, for serving, and even as little ice cream cups. The terracotta of the deep red earth of Kerala, which becomes even more brilliant during the rains, is made into these terracotta pots. A little village called Aruvakod has about 80 families who make these beautiful pots. A revival of ancient traditions, where they earlier used to cook for Maharajas, then for ordinary people 
and now perhaps for the whole world. Bell metal and any sort of craft related to prayer is very strong in India. So the bell metal lamp, the small items that you would put in a prayer room at home, and this box to keep beetle leaf for ceremonial occasions are all, again, living crafts of Kerala. Tamil Nadu is a state that is rooted in colour. Colour particularly of the powder which is used for the bindi, kumkum on the forehead, and haldi, turmeric, manjala, yellow, turmeric which is used for curing many ailments, placed on injuries and wounds, and if anybody is hurt, a little bit of turmeric in hot milk is an instant remedy. These two colors are on saris. They are on various artifacts and are considered both auspicious and necessary in every household. So our display here and the maps that go with it are a merging of these two colors. The colors themselves tell you that you are in Tamil Nadu. The metal that you see on these vessels are used in everyday life. A coffee filter, a pot to carry tea if you're going somewhere. The glasses, locally called tumblers, which are used to pour the water and drink. Similarly, you can see in this procession of ours here on the map, the procession that comes out of the temple has metal lamps. The rods of the umbrellas are also metal. The musical instruments are often metal. And all this part of the procession is a demonstration of how many crafts there are. The map of Tamil Nadu there and the other one here are also actually painted by this artist with the colours of turmeric and kumkum. So you have those soft hues bringing you to the vibrant colours of the textiles of Tamil Nadu. Apart from courts and palaces and personages and perhaps even governments, it is the temple that gives forth the demand for handmade products. The idol itself is often carved in wood or stone, decorated with the silks woven by the handloom weaver. The music that is played in the evening, the devotional songs, is made of instruments that are made by the artisan. The lamps that are lit are made by the metal worker and the baskets which contain the sweets that are distributed to the poor after a particular ritual or ceremony is distributed in baskets made by a poor basket maker that sits on the streets. So many bow their heads to the temple for their livelihoods, for their living and for continuing grace so that their families can be fed. When we look at the multifarious crafts, the art traditions, and those beautiful textiles woven by handloom weavers, let us not forget that there is something called livelihoods involved in it. It's not just to beautify ourselves or beautify our homes, but to see that the dignity and prosperity of the practitioner of those arts is maintained so that the whole world, as world citizens, as Indian citizens, as any kind of citizen who is concerned about his fellow beings, reaches out to love both the art and the person.